Hi and welcome to this video. We're going to be looking at using FireMonkey styles in a real world business application. And the code for this application is available from Code Central at the URL shown on the screen there. And also it recommended that you read the overview document that's also up there and available. So in this video we're going to be using the server and the configuration tool. So I've already started the server let's just go and run our configuration tool and we're going to go and log into the admin at admin.com password and here let's just go and view the series so here we can already see that we've got a couple of um, custom styles already introduced we can see here that the the default black text has been replaced with some red and green text on the buttons and also if we open up one of these items by double clicking on it we can see we get this object editor form and this is actually a t-list box and within the t-list box we're using multiple styles to be able to show text editing number edits um, and even image editing so let's go ahead and um, look at this form a little bit closer, this object editor and see how we're able to use custom styles within an application using just a simple t-list box to make something that's quite dynamic so within the code we can come down here and we can find the object editor form and here we'll be able to see we have our our editor form and here's our t-list box here we can see this is a t-list box and nothing particularly clever or special about it apart from we've got our style book here and each item that gets added has a style from the style book and if we come in here we can see we've got our buttons which have got the um, the red and the uh, and the green text for the cancel and the OK um, but here's the list box items and we can see we've got if we had date and time then we'd have a date time attribute that's used we've got enumerated types that we've got set up as uh, a list using type information from the runtime type information and we'll cover RTTI uh, in another video we also have kind of our floats, our image, integer just a blank item and a, a string one as well so let's have a look at some how we've been able to use these in quite a generic way. Now the first thing is that you'll notice there's some similarities if we just pull up, let's uh, take the float one and the string one here in their layouts and each one has got a description and this description is picked up from the style name. So here we have on each item that you add in we can set a style name and um, that style name is then used at runtime to find this control and update the text value of it. And if we look here, we can see we also have a value. And on the string, that's a T edit. However, on the float, it's a number box. So we're able to set up the components as we would like to and then just go ahead and call these values. So let's go and have a look at how those values are called. So here we can see we've just got some constants set up for the names of the styles. Okay, so here's our load object method that's used to load our objects in and we can see here we're using runtime type information just to reflect to get the properties that are published on the objects so we can then go build an editor for them uh, we're checking for specific attributes against the um, property types uh, and then this is where we really kind of get into it and what we're looking for here is the actual style to be set depending on the type of property that we find and then we use um, the apply style lookup and we have an on list box editor set style method that's called to capture 
the value and record that onto screen. So if we go ahead and have a look for this, we can see here that we come through, we pick up the style data description and we set that using a string value that's been set already. And we're then going through and uh, finding the property, picking up the current value as a specific type and setting the value through to that. So here we're able to say, look, take the item, the list box item, find the styles data for the value, which we can then set the, um, to be the current value as an integer or as an extended value and so on. So it has the same matching data type to go in. So this is pretty cool because we're able to actually take our object with our specific data types at runtime and build a, a custom editor. And using the same value name all the way through, it's quite easy to then go find the style data value property. So, and, and this style data is something that belongs to TFMX object. Um, it allows you to work all the way down to any styled object to find its style data. Okay, so we've seen how we can use the styles once we've got them set up, but how can we go create them in the first place? Well, it's very easy, um, and probably the simplest way to do it is literally just go ahead and add an item. Um, and once you've got your item in here, if you right click on it, you can edit the custom style. Now this will give you a style that you can use and name and apply to anything you want, but it won't override the default. If you want to override the default, then you need to edit the default style. So we're going to edit the custom style here. And when we do that, we then get in here our new style. And this is a list box item one, and it's got two style bits that have been added here. One's the check style that's used on the style, uh, and the other part is the actual style itself. So um, if we have a look here, we can see this check has um, a style lookup that it's actually using another style to help form part of this style. So if we go ahead and we change this check style, then that will reflect back on this style one. So I don't actually want that style. So what I can do is let's just select it and remove it out of the way. And on the actual item here, we can now come down. Let's just remove this text from the style lookup. We can maintain the check name because there will be times, especially when you're using other components, that there's names within the contract that that object has. So if you want to use the is checked um, property on the list box item, then you'll need to have that check style name implemented. You could go ahead and change it, um, but uh, just be aware when you are removing things that uh, you need to uh, be aware of the contracts that the object um, or the components, should I say, that you're using has. So I'm just going to head now and let's uh, take this whole object. If I click in the bottom corner or in one of the corners, I should now be able to just stretch it, change its size. If I want to put a button on there, I can just drag uh, a button onto the style and say where I want it. And um, now with this button, I may want to align it to, let's align it to the center. Um, and here we can see now I've got a button in the middle of my style. And if I want to put some text on that button, um, I need to go and write in the text to be hello button style. And I can come in here and potentially it should be able to change the size of the button as well. Uh, if you can't quite, I've got a trackpad that I'm trying to use here. So I might just go ahead and use the um, the width property, let's just update this to 120, there we are, that's a bit better. So we can see you can kind of play around with the objects once you've got them in there. You can also kind of move them around, so if you wanted to um, drag that onto the text, then you can make it a child of the text property uh, and so on as well. 
uh, or, or child to the check property <laughs> and so on. So quite a few things that you can do with the styles in the same way you'd use the uh, objects on the forms. Um, and then once you've got them set, you're then ready to go and program to them. So I'm going to go and have a look underneath the hood here. We can see um, that our style has been updated. Now there is um, one of the styles and let's just check the load. It's the no, it is in here. Let's come down here and find the class. We can see we've actually got um, we're finding um, a control here called clear and that is the button on the image style and even using that we're able to set up a team notify event here which is called on clear image and if we go find that at the top of the file here we can see we've got an, a, uh, a procedure that runs taking the um, the current image uh, and running it through so we find the current items value and then we clear that through so that's kind of cool um, you can actually uh, load up and using um, using events uh, assign events to the specific list box items to then get those to fire through as well um, which is pretty pretty handy now just to finish off I just want to make you aware of a few really handy resources that you can go find um, Obviously, the uh, the Code Central article is up here with a link for the the whole of the demo, along with um, specifically the code. But also, make sure you have a look around DocWiki. Um, having a quick search in DocWiki using styles, you can find some really interesting um, articles talking about customizing FireMonkey applications with styles, and how to convert VCL styles to FireMonkey within XE3 and um, editing, editing a FireMonkey style and so on. Now there's also some demos that ship along with the product. Um, if you have a look in the demos directory you'll be able to find some extra ones there. I think one's called Custom List Box um, which has uh, another example of doing something very similar. Okay so I hope you found that an intro, uh, a useful introduction and give you a chance to kind of get going and using it and uh, look forward to seeing you back soon.